morning guys. So what we're going to be working with today for discrete, we're going to be continuing with our unit on analyzing elections and the way that votes are processed, right? But today we're going to be analyzing something that comes along when it comes to elections and all of that, being able to analyze who helps the party out and who's able to help out people running for politics. We refer to those as pivotal players, right? And what a pivotal player is, a pivotal player is a person that is able to bring, in what we'll call this case, the win for the group, right? The pivotal player is the person that's able to define the win. So basically think of it this way. If you need 20 points to win the game and you have 18, the pivotal player would be considered the person that scored you the 20th point to get you the win. Pivotal player is the person that brings the win around, right? The pivotal player is the person that once they're there involved, you have the win automatically, right? And again, this is important for elections because again, when it comes to voting, when it comes to elections, pivotal players are considered those politicians that can help people bring in the win. So think of it almost as somebody's running for president. Every state has a certain number of votes. The pivotal state, in this case, would be the state that helps the person become president because of their block of votes, right? So again, pivotal players are those people that help win, right? And so we're gonna analyze situations where we wanna see who the pivotal players are in certain situations, right? So we're gonna focus on certain voting sequences, right? So what I mean by that is, I'm gonna show this, it may look a bit odd to you, something that you guys have never seen. Let's take this sequence here, this voting sequence, and I'll explain what this represents, right? Where this is gonna be 15, it's going to be eight. That's going to be seven, right? Again, at the moment, this shouldn't mean anything to you guys. All this represents is just four different numbers, right? We have these three numbers here grouped together. We have this number here to start. And what these numbers represent is the first number here is what we refer to as the quota. And what that is, is basically how much is needed to win, right? How much? How much is needed to win? Okay. So in this case, if we were trying to win, we know that we would need 20, right? Because 20 is what we need to win. What these other three numbers are, those other three numbers represent three different players. And it doesn't always have to be three. Sometimes it could be four, sometimes it could be seven. What those numbers represent is how many points each player brings to the situation, right? So this 15, that would be player one, right? So player one offers 15 points. Player two offers eight points. Player three offers seven points. And again, if there was another one, that would be player four. If that was another one, there'd be player five, right? So again, when we're looking at this, the first number represents the quota, how many points are needed to win. And then all of these here represent the points that each player brings in that order, right? Player one brings 15, player two offers eight points, player three offers seven votes. And the way that we calculate pivotal players all depends on the order in which they go, right? So if player one goes first, you automatically know you already have 15 points to start. If player two goes first, we know we only have eight points to start, right? So it all depends on the order that the players are coming in, right? They don't always come in an order. It all depends what order they start, right? And so what we're gonna analyze now is who the pivotal players are based on the order that they come in. And remember, for us to win, we need these players to actually get 20 points because if you get 20 points, you win. If you don't have 20 points, you don't win, right? So let's take a look at this. And I'm gonna give you a situation just for you guys to actually see how this is actually analyzed. What we're gonna to wanna to do, we're gonna to wanna to end up figuring out who the pivotal player is for a sequence that I'm gonna give you. Sequence that I'm gonna give you is gonna be this one. The order is gonna be player two, player one, and player three, right? So this is the order that they're gonna go, and out of those three, I'm gonna to wanna to find out who's the pivotal player out of those three, and it has to follow that order, right? 
So the first thing, again, if it helps, write it out, guys, for you to be able to see. That's player one. That's player two. That's player three, right? And again, order is extremely important with this. So the first one, we can take a look at it. We know that in order to figure out the pivotal players, we have to go in order. The first one is P2, right? So P2 brings eight. We know that we need 20 to win. So if we only have eight and we need 20 to win, we haven't won. So he's not the pivotal player because he didn't help us win. So next one. So we did that one, that was eight. Let's do the next one. Player one, player one is 15. And what you do with these numbers, you always add them. You always have to add them, right? So we did player two was eight. That only gave us eight, we need 20, so that wasn't good. Next we did player one, gave us 15. Right? If we see it, 8 plus 15 gives us 23, which automatically tells us right there. The second player one came in all together. Now we had 23 points. We only need 20 points to win. And since we have more than what we need, we know that we won already. And so the person that helped bring us the win was player two, right? Because player one only gave us eight, which didn't help. But the second we got player two, which was the order, I'm sorry, this is, I apologize for that. That was player two, right? But the second that player one got involved with his 15 points, we won. So the pivotal player in this case was P1, player one. He was our pivotal player, okay? And he was our pivotal player because again, the order that he came in, gave us the win. If we needed 20, we got 23, we won. We won thanks to player one, right? And that's how we're gonna always analyze it. Let's try another one. And again, you're always gonna add those numbers, guys, always. Right? And I'll keep that up just for this case. Let's do now the order of player one, player three, player two. Player one, player three, and player two. Same thing. We want to figure out who the pivotal player is going to be, right? We want to figure out who's the most important person that's going to help us bring the win. And same thing. Go in order, right? So we know that the first one that we have is player one. Player one brings 15 points, right? That's player one. Brings us 15 points. We need 20, so that's not good, right? He's not the pivotal player. Next is player three. So player three is seven plus seven. Now if we do 15 plus seven, that gives us 22. And what do we notice? 22 is higher than 20. Since 22 is higher than 20, we know that this was the reason why now we're winning. That seven was player three. So if we're looking at who helped us win, who made us win in this case, it was Player three. Player three would be our pivotal player. Because again, following the order, 15 points wasn't enough to win, but the second we got an extra seven from player three, we won. 22, we needed 20, we won. That's why player three is our pivotal player. Again, you always have to go in order, guys. Let's try a different one now, right? And again, it's gonna be the same situation, guys. Just figuring out who the pivotal player is based on the amount of points we have when certain players enter the game. So we'll do the voting sequence of 35, right? And then again, I'll do three players where it's gonna be 17, 20, and 10, okay? And again, looking at this, we know that our quota, the amount of points we need to win is 35. And then those are the amounts that our players bring in, right? So this is player one, that's player two, this is player three, right? And now again, we need to analyze the sequence. So I'm gonna tell you that the voting sequence for the players is going to end up being player two, player three, and player one, right? Same idea, we wanna figure out who's the pivotal player that helps us win. So, again, follow the order all the time, right? First one that we have to do, 
player two, right? Player two has 20 points. So we have 20 points. We need 35. So he can't be the pivotal player, right? Moving on. Next one, player three. Player three has 10 points. We're going to add those, right? 20 plus 10 is 30. We need 35. He's not the pivotal player because, again, player two brought us 20 points. Player three brought us 10. 20 plus 10 is 30. We need 35, so we still have it one. Now, if we add up player one, right? If we add up player one now, we have 30 plus 17. 30 plus 17 gives us 47. The second that we brought in player one, we now have 47 points. We needed 35. So the person that brought us the win was player one. Player one would be our pivotal player. Because again, without those points, we can't win. When we had player two, we just had 20. When we had player three, then we had 30 together, but we need 35. Only when player one came in did we get enough points to win. That's why he was the pivotal player. Again, it's just always analyzing how many points we need and how many points we have as certain players come in. And the one player that brings us the win is considered our pivotal player, which would be player one. Again, guys, next class we're going to use this to then analyze the shapley schubik power index. It's a way of analyzing the value of certain players in a, given, in a bunch of given sequences to see how valuable somebody really is over a bunch of situations. That's what we're going to do next class. But it's all on understanding pivotal players. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Take care.